Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Evoke Bike Podcast. Really excited to have Luke Limperity here from Trinity Racing. Uh, you guys have definitely seen him in the news here in the States, and he's just tearing it up. And I'm sure, Luke, you've heard this a million times. Wow, you're only 19 years old. Uh, you probably get tired of hearing that, but we're really excited to have you on and uh, welcome from Spain. Yeah, thank you guys very much for uh, having me on. So I don't want to put the words in your mouth. The first question usually is, who's Luke Lamperti? And am I saying your? I heard someone say Lamperti and Lamperty. How how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Lamperty. So less like pear, kind of more per Lamperty, <laughs> but kind of however it works. It's kind of a uh, it's a toss up. It doesn't really make a difference to me. It's not like I'm one of those people that's like one way is the way. So yeah. whatever. All right. So who is Luke Lim? Whatever it goes. Parity. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm a uh, 19 year old kid who's from Northern California, like an hour north of San Francisco. And yeah, I grew up uh, actually racing motocross and then now racing bicycles full time. Uh, like you mentioned, I live in Girona, Spain now. So over here most of the time to uh, race bicycles. Very cool. So we'll just run through some quick uh, rapid fire ones to peel the curtain back. Um, and if there's an out, it, Usually it's an A or B, but if there's C, go with uh, the answer that is what you're thinking about. Um, high socks or low socks? High socks, for sure. Uh, on the bike, definitely not low socks, but off the bike, both. Okay. Uh, you're going on a long ride. Are you gels and bars or candy and sandwiches? Uh, candy and sandwiches. Okay. Speed suit or bibs and jersey? Bibs and jersey. Uh, so I saw people probably seen a video. You are on 28s, uh, for tire width. Are you still staying with that or ever veering a little bit higher, a little bit lower? Uh, 28s, sometimes thirties, but 28s. All right. Uh, wax chain or wet lube? Uh, dry lube. Dry lube. Tubes or tubeless? Uh, tubeless. In the gym or not worth it? uh should do it but don't <laughs> <laughs> like that um i know this answer but self-coached or coach uh coached and two last ones road race or crit uh road race surprisingly and, yeah yeah <laughs> and then catch people off guard but uh, okay I'll, i like that uh and stage race or one day one day okay yeah, it's interesting, man. I, I'm sure I was trying to catch him on different podcasts you'd been on and, and things like that. And your answer rings very true to sort of what Travis McCabe said when he was on, I can't remember the podcast, and people were talking about him being the crit uh, national champion. He's like, well, I really want the road race. Like, that's really the one. And with you being a guy who's in Europe, um, is, is the road race way above the crit to you? Or is it, I mean, you are an American kid, so crit racing is the U S thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously I'd love to have the crit the road races above it, but I wouldn't say it's way above it. Like I really want to win the road race for sure. Cause you get to wear the Jersey for a whole year all the time. But, uh, yeah, so it's definitely above it, but it's not way above it, but it's definitely, uh, my main priority for sure. Okay, cool. So let's talk about training a little bit. And you had mentioned the motocross and I know a lot of guys, well, I actually don't know a lot, but the handful that I know that came from motocross are amazing descenders. Um, what do you think translated from that to bikes? Was it the speed? Was it handling? Was it a whole bunch of things? Have you brought over skills from moto into cycling? Yeah, I think you just naturally kind of do, you know, like you just, I grew up on two wheels and that just the response time and everything that you kind of bring from moto, obviously it's a little bit higher speed, but then also slow speed at times. So it's, you kind of bring all of it, you know, it's that the balance, the descending, cornering, understanding lines kind of, you bring a lot of things I think from, uh, from motor, at least I feel like I did. And yeah, that definitely translates not directly, but it translates in different ways to how you ride a bike or how you descend. Like whenever you ride with a moto guy, you can kind of tell if they ride only moto and then a little bit of bicycles, you can tell by the way they ride their moto guy, you know, like, or at least I can, it's, uh, it comes out obvious. Like if you're, a moto guy. And I think, uh, that translates to a lot of things on the bike. That's interesting. Um, your coach, is it still Peter Kenna? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's Pete so, Kenick. uh, how do you pronounce the last name? Kenyuk. 
Kenyuk. Okay. Um, he was on Team Sky and a few other te- teams. Um, you'd made a comment, just sort of his training plans, a real mix, intervals, group rides, fun but serious when you need to be, and sort of a good balance of training. Can you dig in on that a little bit more? Like what, what's your bread and butter for training or what do you usually expect to see on a training calendar? Maybe what would surprise you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, it's kind of a mixture of a little bit of everything. A lot of it, uh, is general endurance rides. Like I do a lot of general endurance rides and then ride a climb hard here or there, uh, if I feel like it, but I would say a lot of the interval stuff, uh, is then mainly just high end, like not a ton of just riding kind of hard. It's either that general endurance where you get in that zone three worker threshold, even on the climb. And then the interval stuff is, uh, shorter and harder. So more, 40 20s 2040s that type of stuff um and then kind of backing that up with maybe a harder effort or a sprint and then going into more of a zone three or threshold to uh flush up legs at that higher intensity i would say is kind of what what i'm end up doing a lot of the time um but yeah for me it kind of changes depending on what race i'm going into or what i'm coming off of sometimes you just really need rest, you know, like you don't realize it. You're like, Oh, I need to train more. Sometimes just a few days off is the best thing for training. Uh, so yeah, just a mixture of everything really. That's uh, do you find having clearly a pretty solid sprint um, winning the crit champs in this past year by a mile, it seemed like, do you double down on that strength or do you find yourself doing less sprint training? Cause you're naturally gifted at that. Um, I feel like most of my sprint training actually is to city limit signs and stuff like that. Like just against someone, the best way to train is sprinting against someone you're training with versus yes. it's really hard to like get a max sprint, just out riding be like, all right, do five max sprints. You're out riding by yourself. It's like, it's pretty hard to do them all out whenever you do them next to someone. Like if you start at one sign and race to the next sign, I feel like I always do 10 times better of a sprint. And, uh, so I'd say that's the main way I kind of do that and less of just like, oh, I'll finish the ride with five sprints right dude i'm i'm clipping that and putting that in a workout that's actually one of like it, i just call it town line sprints because i realized this as i was riding with a buddy of mine who's a much better sprinter than me i had to figure out the timing and it was like okay how do i beat this guy he's clearly clearly mm-hmm. stronger than i am and it was it's one of the most mailed in workouts we're like oh we just rode i kind of forgot about those i'm like ah this was this is the day to go hammer your friend like how did you not enjoy doing that okay yeah (laughs) what do you what do you think is then you maybe kind of alluded to this in how the training is laid out what do you think is the most important aspect of your training to get you where you are um i'd say the most important honestly is just hours on the bike like you just have to spend at the end of the day it's like anything you know seat time is kind of what it always comes back to it's what it was in motocross i think bicycles just seat time at the end of the day like obviously you got to do it right and go into a race fresh or on the top end if you don't do that or do the endurance but really just spending time on the bike it's the the farther i've gotten in the sport the more simple i've realized training is like you need less than you think you know you can do it pretty simple like you hear all these old guys like valverde or whatever just does group rides every day now because he has so many years in the legs and it's like i kind of believe it you know i used to be like ah there's no way he just says it but i really do believe that it's like it's pretty simple you know you have the same things uh that you do that work for you and you figure that out as you go and it gets simpler and simpler as you figure that out. How many hours is like a normal week for you? I'd say somewhere around 20, uh, bigger weeks, more towards, I don't know, 23 to 25, something like that. But, uh, say around 20 is kind of an average, uh, average week. And then some less going into a race, whatever, whatnot, but around there. Cool. I always like to get clarity for people because people will email me a message afterwards because i just had brendan rim on. he's like well i don't do that much volume i do like 25 hour a week so i'm like brendan that's a, that's a lot of riding he's like well it's not 30 i was like okay fair so i'm trying to calibrate yeah, yeah, not everybody. 25 average no 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 <laughs> yeah, don't is, spend that many hours <laughs> what's your then on the flip side what's your main limiter and we can skip questions if you don't like answering these. Um, and how would you go about working on that and it might be dependent on a race or do you see like physiologically uh peter peter's seen something like hey we should really work on this um i'd say one of my main limiters is time trialing which Mm. matters and doesn't really matter it's like when you have a stage race that's good for me it can like a lot of stages can be good then it can come down to a time trial it's like oh then maybe can't ride for gc so that's one thing that i would like to work on because when you're in that position of going for a gc it's uh it's important to be able to uh, at least do a 
one off good time trial here and there. And I'd say that's something I need to work on or should work on. Um, that's kind of a limiter for me that I've never really put a ton of time into because I'm not, I don't really do that many of them and I haven't focused on them. So it's kind of just like, ah, uh, don't do them. But I, uh, yeah, it's something to be worked on for sure. It's got to be tough because there's only, there's an opportunity cost to everything. You do one thing you can't work on in the, on the other thing. And with so many guys going in on the TT and like really focusing on it, it's, uh, it's not obviously sport in its own, but those that are really dedicated to discipline, you see them make gains. It's like, damn, how can I catch up to them on that? Uh, so do you, you had commented somewhere else, like you're not really sure exactly what type of rider you are or going to be, I should say. Is there a type, like, do you want to be a GC guy? Are you still trying to feel that out? Is it? Yeah. I mean, I'm, really what I'm basically kind of in between is whether I want to do like one day classic stuff in the spring or more of like pure, pure field sprints, which is kind of like what I'm figuring out, like right now, kind of doing a little bit of everything, but at some point, normally you'll choose between one or the other, focus more on one than the other. But uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where I'll, where I'll end up with it, but one of one or the other, less of uh, a GC guy. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, have you ever trained too much or maybe said differently? Like, are there any red flags to you in training? Like, oh, I need to back off a little bit if, besides, and maybe it's just the feel of like, I'm feeling kind of dull. It's time for some rest or how do you guys gauge that? Yeah, I think it's all kind of just based off feel, which is a lot of, uh, a lot of training is just knowing yourself. And that's kind of why I said it gets simpler and simpler because the more, you know, the easier it is for you. Cause you know, when you're at that limit, where it's like, when you're young, you just keep going and you don't really know, you know, you think, oh, maybe it's more, but sometimes it's rest. And I feel like I've been one to like pack too much racing in and like keep training in between. And then you get to the point where you're just like pretty dull and fatigued. And then, but you're not really sure if you need to get stronger because you're not really there. Like you don't really know whether it's to back off or not. And that's kind of where a coach comes in. Someone mm -hmm. like Pete, who's done it for long enough that can see it and be like, ah, oh, now's the time to back off not add more and you think you're going backwards but really taking steps forward so i'd say that's a big uh big red flag to me i guess it's kind of when yeah. i get close to that point uh like knowing where that's at it's important very cool um so you'd mentioned maybe not lifting enough what type of lifting do you think you would get more into and did you lift when you were doing moto because that's pretty hard um, sport in yeah itself. i did more did more gym but i'd say i don't really go to the gym that much i do more body weight stuff and everything kind of at home uh so i could probably go to the gym and do leg press and that type of stuff but uh yeah i spend more time kind of just doing body weight whatever and uh try to stretch and foam roll when i can and when i remember to but uh yeah i try to do all that stuff but more from home don't really go to the gym that much cool so let's talk about racing a little bit and I mean, it's, t and do you, are you tired of people being like, dude, you're only, only 19 and, and seeing the race results that you've had. I mean, in the one podcast you did with, uh, I can't remember the name it was like Dane cycling. Uh, I can't remember his, his title on YouTube, but you were talking about tour Britain where you were fourth in front of Mark Cavendish. And if I have the story correct, Cav was like losing a wheel and you went around him and just, I mean, is it, how does this feel right now for you to be racing at that level around these guys that you were probably watching when you were younger or, I mean, is it, does it feel a little surreal? Yeah, in a way. I mean, it's super cool to kind of race guys like that. Like obviously a lot of the guys you raced against tour Britain last year was a big race for the team. And then, yeah, there was a lot of guys there because it was right before world. So it was kind of a world's prep race. So you had Alaphilippe and Wout and uh, a lot of those guys, Cav and guys, you, hear about all the time now uh, at the top of the top of the sport and it's super cool to race with them and kind of like you always want to compare yourself to the top you know like in anything you do when you're a little kid and you play baseball you want to compare yourself to the MLB you play football you want to compare yourself to NFL and so I think uh being able to race with those guys is definitely uh super cool in a way to kind of see where you're at but also just to learn from them and like you watch the way those guys race is a lot different than another 23 race or anything like that. So it's, uh, it's cool to watch for sure. And what, are some, what are some of those biggest things that you've picked up while in the races with the elite men, as opposed to racing in the U 23s? Um, yeah, I'd say just the biggest difference is in the under 23s, everyone's kind of still out to prove themselves. Uh, everyone, like the main thing is to obviously go to the world tour. So everyone's there to 
prove themselves and fight for a contract. Whereas once you're in the world tour at the bigger races, everybody has their job, you know, everyone's paid to do what they're paid to do, not to go out and get the result. Like some guys are paid to go get the result, but a lot of guys are paid to help those guys get a result. Whereas in 23 is, yeah, you might have a leader, but still everyone kind of wants their chance and wants their shot to prove themselves to uh, go to the world tour. So it's a lot more, controlled racing and a lot less of uh people trying to prove themselves i guess is mm. the difference that's interesting so when you say control even more so like just more teamwork and more people willing to lay it out there for their teammate as opposed to yeah know, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. um exactly. so i think you had linked up with trinity through was it your manager or what's the quick story on how you got linked up with those um, guys yeah, long story short, Andrew McQuaid, who runs Trinity Sports That's Management, right. was uh, my agent and then runs the team, but also the connection through Specialized. I've been on Specialized with Lux as a junior and then kind of carried that connection through to Trinity. Uh, so they're a really big part of Trinity and helping us run and all of that. And so, uh, yeah, stick with them also was part of that decision. I know you'd mentioned, you know, another good thing is they all speak English and they have, you know, just communicating with teammates and staff and there's some obvious hitters of like Tom Pidcock and Ben Turner uh, that have graduated from there, gone world tour. Do you guys ever see those guys or, or anybody tr trying to lend a hand back down to Trinity or what are some things about that program that you just really enjoy being a part of? Yeah, for sure. It's a pretty young program. It only started uh, not that long ago, kind of with Pidcock. And then obviously now he's, doing super well and then since then the team has also kind of made a name for itself with other guys um like you said yeah ben turner was on the team last year ben healy uh went to the world tour as well with ef and so yeah all of those guys are still still around and uh still talk to them quite a bit and yeah to watch them go and succeed is always uh super cool and so yeah that's what everyone is kind of on the team for is to do do the same and follow that uh follow them i guess or follow in their footsteps so to say, and uh, yeah, it's a super, super good program for that. And hopefully uh, runs a long time. So, so yeah, that's, the that's plan. great. Very cool. What's anything, you know, you talked in training, obviously if you're coming up to a race, you're maybe going to be tapering off for a big race. Um, you might be training through some other races. What's kind of making you feel ready for a big race. And maybe it's not even now, or maybe even when you went to like a big U S race and, uh, just, you know, two days before you're like, I'm ready to crush this. Is there anything, maybe not a specific workout, but just things that you can kind of like litmus test to yourself. I feel like it all comes back down to like feeling or races you've done recently. Like if you're going well, you kind of just know you're going to continue to go well, a lot of, uh, the sport and then especially sprinting is confidence. And so I think when you have that confidence and the ball's rolling, you're you're halfway there kind of, even if the fitness isn't like just having that confidence is huge and uh, yeah, keeping that rolling. And then also when you're out training before, I guess when you just feel good or when you're winning every timeline sprint, then you know, you're going well, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's kind of a lot of it is just off of feeling and then momentum. Like if you have that momentum, then you're confident and it carries for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. It carries to other races and all over. So What's that last two laps going through your head? Um, whether it's crit Nats, whether it's tour of Britain, whether it's, uh, I mean, you've been in so many huge races. Uh, are, are you thinking, talking to yourself, anything, or is it just so much rapid fire focusing on the race? And, uh, can you even put that into words? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like a lot of it is like, you're not really like you're thinking, but it's all just quick decisions. You know, it's like, when you race, I mean, you race a ton and so you kind of just, it's making those quick decisions. Like you have a split second to make decisions and uh, yeah, those decisions are just made right then and there and there's no really changing, uh, changing those. And so I think it's all about just making those quick decisions and thinking about positioning and all of that coming into the sprint is, uh, is a lot of it for sure. Like just quick decisions. Yeah. Do you notice then, a difference from the early races versus when you're like back? Because I, I know a lot of people, I mean, at least as amateurs, we're like, damn, first race of the year, like kind of dust off the cobwebs. And it's just, there's different butterflies. Do you know, haven't, it, do you feel the same way or you, have you just been racing for so, so many races and big races? That it's like, ah, just another race. Um, you can do a little bit when you start the season. And then obviously like the beginning of the year, everything's a little bit more 
frantic, a bit less relaxed. Like everyone's kind of starting on a clean slate in a sense. But uh, I think like when you come into a final, obviously when you've been doing a lot of them later in the year, it's like you've just been doing them around the same guys because it's changing every year kind of who's there. I think, uh, yeah, everyone's a little bit more relaxed, but at the same time, I feel like every sprint's hectic and they're kind of all similar. Like it doesn't really matter whether it's the first race or the last race of the season. It's like, I feel like a lot of people are just the same uh, as far as that goes. So just embrace the chaos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, what of your results are you most proud of? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. I'd say, uh, I mean, definitely the stuff I've done in Europe, just from kind of the, cause that's where I want to be. And that's what I really care about. Uh, like obviously the crit titles are great. Uh, I do, I do, uh, love having those, like it is amazing, but the stuff I've done in Europe is definitely kind of what I would say is, uh, is bigger to me. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How do you rank something, uh, Brussels cycling classic, you were like 30 something. Are you like, damn, that sucked. Or are you thinking, Oh, Hey, not bad. Top 30, like on to the next one. Uh, it's hard. Yeah. Um, it's hard to rank it like that race specifically last year. I had, uh, a bit of a knee problem, like stupid thing hit my knee on a table and, uh, had an issue. So I was coming back from that, like right before to a Britain and crammed in like a bunch of Belgium one day to try to just get fitness. Cause they're all like 200 K is just smashing around Belgium all day. So they're great for fitness. So those ones were like, that one was good because it was like kind of coming back in the right direction. Like a lot of those one days I just been getting my head kicked in for a while. And then that one, I was like, all right, like kind of coming back, was able to be up there a little bit, but it's not, I wouldn't say like I go home from a 30th. I'm like, all right, that was, that was amazing. You know, 1.1, like it's kind of just like, man, you want to do better than that, obviously. So it's solid, but it's not, uh, it's not like you go home with, uh, screaming and shouting everyone or how yeah, you yeah. want to post it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I just always like to hear how you guys view it um, because I was over there. I actually watched Brussels Cycling Classic. I think it was 2012. I went to the Vuelta, then stopped over there, and I think Greipel won. And so, see, I mean, just you're at such a high level, of, again, racing the guys that we're all watching, and it's just crazy to see your name amongst that. Uh, it's just so cool. I'm always just curious how the person actually doing that feels. And yeah, it's probably motivating, like you said, and just go back and hopefully get on the podium the next time. <laughs> yeah, what, exactly. What's the biggest goal race over in Europe? Or do you think it's too early to tell not knowing how you really want to specify yourself? Yeah, it's too hard to tell. I mean, obviously you have like the monuments, the big classics. Roubaix has always been kind of, or was one of my favorite races when I was a, uh, junior i did it once and then since then i've kind of had uh bad luck getting back to it from uh yeah two years being canceled my last year juniors and then under 23 and then this year again it got uh canceled so it's kind of hard to say that that's still like one of them but it's definitely a big goal and then obviously uh yeah you kind of want to do the tour de france uh it's obviously always a big goal because it's something everyone can relate to um everyone if you know about cycling especially in the u.s it's like the tour de france if you know anything uh or if you know one thing it's the tour de france i should say so uh yeah that and then kind of the classics are big goals uh this would since it's not the tour giro or vuelta if you had to do one of the other ones um i think giro i did the baby giro last year with uh trinity and it's super cool race. So I think Giro, but I don't know. I mean, I know about the wealth. I guess I live in Spain, so I ride around Spain. But uh, yeah, I'd say the Giro probably. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going. I've always liked watching the wealth, I think, just because it's like the Sayonara cycling grand mm -hmm. tours for the year. But uh, I've never been to Italy. I'm going there in September. So I hear it's incredible. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it's yeah, all about. No, it's really cool. Really cool spot. Um, nutrition. How much does this play a part into you as an athlete? Uh, massive. I would say, I'd say it's a huge part of it. And, uh, yeah, on and off the bike, I'd say off the bike, it's huge. I mean, a lot of cycling is power to weight, but, uh, that kind of comes back to the training thing. Like it gets simpler and simpler as you know yourself more, it's kind of different for everyone. So it's uh, hard to like put one nutrition plan together and be like every cyclist should eat this and you'll be 
you'll be the best you can be. Everyone's different, you know, with what they need, what they're doing and how you're training or how your body, what your body needs. Um, and then in racing, I'd say it is crucial. Uh, like you can tell a massive difference if you're eating enough or not in a race. And yeah, that's a little bit different for everyone, but now it's kind of, there's a lot of science proven that you need to eat a lot more than guys ever did. Um, kind of going up to that hundred grams of carbs an hour is kind of like now the, the magic number, which is pretty hard to do when you, uh, when you add up how much hundred grams of carbs is like now, a lot of companies are making 40 grams of carbs, gels and bars and all of that. So it's not too hard anymore, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely not easy. And so, yeah, getting to that number is hard, but you can feel when you're fueling plenty, it definitely makes a massive difference versus when you're not in a road race. Getting a little bit more granular on that. Are you more, do you like to lean towards more liquid carbs, like uh, one of those high carb choices that are out there, or are you more eating the 40 gram gels or do you just mix it up based on whatever's around? Um, yeah. When it's colder out, I'm more of a, uh, through the liquids, so I'll do like um, high carb drink mix. And then when it's a little bit warmer out, I'll do more hydration to hydrate and then more of gels and bars and that stuff. But uh, always a little bit of everything, but less of the high carb mix when it's warmer out. So you get more hydration. Very, yeah, that's a good idea. What's the, are you doing anything like immediately? Are you one of those guys immediately post ride? You need to eat X, Y, and Z shakes specific food um yeah i mean i kind of uh just eat after training rides like get home and shower and make lunch or make something to eat normally uh it's never really x y and z and yeah sometimes i'll have a uh, protein shake after a ride sometimes i won't I'm not really like a i have this every time after i ride or i eat this exactly after i ride um just kind of like get back shower and eat pretty quick so it's kind of in that short window but uh yeah, nothing super specific, pretty, pretty relaxed. Do you think that sort of mindset towards, is that something you've come to in just more training maturity and racing a bunch, or, you know, it kind of goes along the lines of with your training, just kind of following how you feel. Do you think that you just go by what your body's telling you? Yeah, I think it's all just go off of feel like if you're, if I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not as hungry, I don't eat really. Um, yeah. For me, like I don't really weigh out everything or count everything up. I'm more of a uh, just eat here and there. Like, yeah, I weigh myself uh, depending on when it is or what's coming up, but I'm never super, super serious on it. More of eat healthy and uh, yeah, not too much or too little, but kind of find that sweet spot off how I feel. That's in, So on like the random weigh-ins, do you do that? Um, or so do you guide more just by like how you look like, Hey, I look damn, I'm eating a little bit too much or, um, what's the point of the random way and just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, curiosity. And then actually a lot of time it'll be at stage races, uh, before the stage and after the stage, just to make sure you're having enough water and not mm. losing too much and eating enough and all of that. So more, more in that sense than it is like, uh, yeah. And then also just random wins, just make sure you're all right. Like sometimes, yeah, you can't really tell the difference of a kilo or two kilos. Like sometimes you feel it, but sometimes you don't know. So it can confirm one way or the other, or yeah, it just helps here, there, but not, not all the time. Cool. Uh, equipment. So anything you've been with specialized for a long time. So obviously riding those, anything unique about your setup? I know you've got a monster gear that you can tell people about and what sort of is that just sprint life or? Yeah, I think. Uh, is that a common gear yeah, I mean, for? Um, yeah. So basically a lot of the SRAM guys are running the 54 uh, and then they make the 10 cassette. So you're running a 54, 10 is kind of your big gear. And it's kind of just what's uh, what's pretty common uh, with most of the SRAM teams now, I think, is everyone's pretty much running a 52 or 54, uh, sometimes the 50 still. But I think it's mostly 52, 54. So it's not uh, to unheard of, but yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quite a good year for fast sprints, more road sprint than crit. I think you can get away with a 50 and a crit for sure. Uh, but the 54 is nice to have. I'd say it's kind of a convenience. You can pedal down a lot of hills with a 54 10, uh, and just, yeah, you can come into a sprint that's, uh, pretty fast and 
still be able to get on top of the gear. That's it's interesting too because I had a 5411 last year, and I guess a 5310 is even a bigger gear. And I realized this at Masters Nats in Albuquerque because the finish was we came down this drag, and it was definitely a pedal on the drag. And I was with a guy, I'm like, dude, put, like spin that out. And I was like, oh damn, I'm under geared with the 5411. So the 10 makes way more of a difference than I ever expected. So I'm a Shimano guy, so I need 12 speed soon. But <laughs> yeah, does a 12 speed have a 10? I'm hoping. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say a 5411 is probably close I mean, big enough of a gear. It's close enough. But uh, yeah, the 5410 is kind of nice because you have that 11 and then you can click down to the 10. But uh, yeah, it's a quite a big gear. The 10 is the 10 makes it really big. Like the difference you feel from the 11 to the 10 is quite big. What do you think for younger guys listening and girls listening? What do you think in today's age it takes to become a pro cyclist? I guess it's a really wide open question. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think the biggest thing more than anything is you have to love the sport. Like it's not, if you don't love it, I think no matter, no matter what, even some of the most talented guys, if you don't love it, I don't think you can do it that long. Um, So I think really just loving the sport is the most important thing I would say about it is like, you just have to love it. Um, if you love it enough, then, then it works out. But, uh, yeah, really just loving it and do it while you enjoy it, you know, like just mm-hmm. enjoy it as much as you can and not be too serious. Like do, do things right, but don't go every 1% when you're super young. Cause there's a time for that. And you still want to love it when you get to that time. Mm-hmm. Were you able to link up with, I know you'd mentioned how you got on Trinity, but do you think, was it just results that got you there? Or do you think people need to get involved with agents earlier on that maybe some American kids are doing, or is there any tricks of the trade that you would pass on to somebody? Yeah, I don't think you really uh, need to have an agent. I think a lot of it's just results when you're younger, just kind of being around the scene and people notice what you're doing and being a good person. Uh yeah, cycling is a small community, so word gets around and just be a good person and ride fast, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think I think if you uh, if you have the results, you get noticed, and then yeah, they're not when you like everyone kind of has that shot to prove themselves, and if you can, then I think that comes and the people uh, people will come, and then you get more opportunity as you go for sure. But uh, there is quite a lot of opportunities now as a junior so i think just using every one of those like you can and uh go for it really yeah do you think uh will you stay mostly road for the time being you did some cross before right i did mountain yeah yeah. so i did mountain at the beginning last year never really done too much cross but done uh, a little bit of mountain bikes do you think you ever try and venture into that realm of racing or are you pretty road Um, road at this point yeah, I mean, I do love riding mountain bikes. I ride mountain bikes a ton. I love racing them. Uh, it is super hard. I forgot how hard it was. I did it when I was really young. And then last year I did it again and like did some of the UCI stuff in Austria before the World Cups and just absolutely got my ass kicked in them. But uh, it was still fun. Had a good time. And yeah, I would love to kind of continue racing mountain bikes. One off here and there is always uh, always fun. Was it different fitness or was it just the bike handling or what do you think? Um yeah, it's a different fitness and then just, uh, yeah, it's just a completely different effort, I guess, really. Uh, the effort is just so, so different. And then, uh, yeah, just, just a lot different, really. <laughs> it is a different sport in a sense, but, uh, yeah, still super fun. Fair enough, man. I don't want to take up your whole day. I appreciate you sitting down and doing this. Do you have any parting words of things you'd like to share with your fans or new followers that be, uh, following you along in the rest of this race season? Yeah, uh, nothing too much else. Uh, If you have any questions, reach out. I'm on Instagram, I guess, mainly is probably the main way. But uh, yeah, however, and thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, man, it's great to have you. And the last question actually, what is the remainder of the year looking like? Do you know for racing? Um, Yeah, so next week I race uh, in Alsace, France, Tour of Alsace, and then uh, go to Arctic Tour of Norway after that. and then I do a tour of Lavenir, which is kind of like the under 23 tour de France, uh, so to speak. So I do that. And then, uh, that's kind of what I have on the calendar for now. Um, that's confirmed. So that's the next little block. Who are you doing the Lavenir with? 
Uh, that's with the national team. Do, you, do they have that? Did they re- release those riders online that people can look that up? Or is it like seven riders going? Or how many people are going to that? Uh, so they're still doing selection for it. It's six guys. Okay. And they're still uh, working on the selection for that. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks, Luke. Appreciate it. Good luck. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you very much.